So let's have a look at some graphs where which we're going to try and change the displacement curve into a velocity curve and possibly even into an acceleration curve for the same motion. I'm just going to do one of these. We might do more in class. Okay. So let's have a look um, and let's draw some lines. Actually, you're going to draw them by hand. Um, just to, to show you, I need a finer pen. So let's have a nice fine pen. All right. So I'm going to start by having an object that moves up like this, comes back down like this, and then goes negative like this. All right. Okay. So what does the velocity curve look like? And this is where you realize that actually the velocity curves don't often look like the object's the object's motion, they're, they're, they're a bit obscure, a bit abstract um, in their shape. They don't look like what the object is actually doing, although these often do. Okay, so we're assuming that these are all straight lines, even though I've drawn them by hand not very well. Um, and let's have a look to see what's going on. All right, let's have a different color as well. So here we've got, we're looking at the gradient, because what we want to do is we want to draw the, we want to find the gradients of this one. And we want to draw them onto the axis of this one. All right, so all the gradients here become values on the axis. And that's the key to getting this one translated into this one. All right, so let's try and do that. Um, I think I might need to go to this, the narrow pen again. I'll leave it on that one so that I'll just keep changing it. Okay, so the gradient here, which we're assuming is constant, is positive, all right, and constant. So up until this point here, which corresponds to a point about here on this graph, because obviously this is just a time axis, we have a positive constant gradient. And that means we have a positive constant velocity. So this is positive, this is negative, this is zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a, we don't care about values, I'm just going to sketch it. We want to draw a positive constant velocity. Now at this point here, there's what we call a discontinuity. It changes instantly. Okay, now this is an unrealistic situation. In the real situation, there would be a curve, but here we've got a point. So what happens here is it immediately changes to this. Now we're going to assume this is a straight line as well. Here we have a, a, a negative but constant uh, gradient. All right, so what's happening here is the object is moving back towards its initial position and going in the other direction. But what's happening is it's doing it all at the same velocity because we know that because the gradient is constant and therefore the velocity must be constant but this time it's negative okay so immediately right up until this point here it switches and it becomes negative so all of this is a constant negative gradient because that line is straight okay and then we just have to join these up and that looks a bit artificial but that's as I say because it's an unrealistic situation and at this point here it changes back to what it was doing before it becomes a positive constant gradient and therefore it becomes a positive constant velocity so it jumps back up to here and becomes positive and constant for the rest of that motion shown on the graph we don't know what it does here so we just leave it like that okay so that's how we translate displacement curves into velocity curves before we do an acceleration curve i just want to do one more and this is the case of um, an object bouncing all right so i'm going to draw a displacement graph which is a curve all right, and it's got a little tiny straight section there, and then it goes up again. All right, so we've got two curves, two humps in this graph, and we're going to do exactly the same thing, except it's slightly more, slightly different, slightly more complicated because we've got curves here, uh, because the gradient is changing. Here it was constant. Okay, so let's take it from the beginning. Here the gradient is positive and quite high. And the gradient, the slope of the line, reduces and reduces and reduces until this point here, where the gradient is zero. All right, right on the top there. It's a, if you drew a tangent to this line, which is effectively another way to draw the gradient, it would be a horizontal line, and therefore there is no gradient. It's zero. <coughs> okay. So let's have a look at how that appears on this graph here. It starts off positive and high, and by this point here, it's come down to zero. So don't forget, we're drawing the values of the gradient on this axis. Okay, so it starts high and positive, and it comes down to zero. So I'm going to draw that. I'm going to assume that that is a parabola up there, and then that would then 
come down to be a straight line. So this curve turns into a straight downward line because the gradient starts off high positive and comes down to zero. Now at that point there, the gradient becomes negative. All this way down, the gradient is negative. And it increases as it comes down. It's quite a shallow gradient there, getting steeper and steeper and steeper until it's very steep, but it's negative. So it's increasing and increasing and increasing in the negative direction, plus, minus. So you can see what happens there. Right up until this point here, it keeps getting, whoops, I missed. It keeps getting more negative. Let's just line that up so it looks better. There. Okay, so what's happening here is the acceleration is staying the same while whatever it is that's being thrown into the air is in the air. So in all this point it's in the air. Here it's at the top of its motion. You can tell that because the displacement is a maximum. And therefore when it's at the top of its motion it's going to change direction. And we know that because the gradient swaps from positive to negative and that's where it hits the axis here. Alright, so this point of the top of the curve, the zero gradient becomes zero on the axis. Okay, and then it comes down again, right? It's increasing its velocity in the opposite direction. When it gets to here, it has a little bit of a flat line. Okay, the gradient becomes zero for a bit. So the gradient immediately, oops, flashes back up to zero, right? And for a tiny fraction of a second, as the ball bounces, whatever it is, it stays where it is. Okay, that's that bit there. And now here, it suddenly becomes very positive again. So we've got a high positive gradient decreasing and decreasing and decreasing until here again it hits zero and then it becomes negative and increases. So it starts off as a discontinuity here and it suddenly becomes very large and positive. So what happens at this point here? It goes up again and does this again. All right, until that point there. Sorry, I've, I've made this a little bit longer than that, but that point there corresponds to this point here. Okay, the gradient is large and negative, which is why it's come all the way down here again. So you get this kind of sawtooth profile to the velocity graph for a bouncing object. This one, you can see what's going on. It's going up, it's coming down, it's bouncing, it's going up, it's coming down. Here, the gradient is constant and negative all the way on the velocity, because the velocity is decreasing and decreasing and decreasing. It's decelerating, which is what the gradient is and then it's accelerating in the other, other direction. So that's what's happening to the velocity. It's slowing down, it's speeding up in the opposite direction, stopping for a bit as it bounces, um, heading up again at high speed, slowing down in the air, and then speeding up as it comes back down again. So obviously that's, as I say, counterintuitive. You wouldn't even imagine that the velocity curve looked like that, but it does. Okay, so let's have a look at the acceleration on this one, because it's quite interesting. The acceleration, <coughs> is the gradient of the velocity. So whatever the gradient is on, on these lines here, we're going to plot those on this axis here. All right. Now this line is straight and it's negative. It's negative all the way and it's constant. So all the way up to here, we are we have got a whoops. I'm going to draw that again because that's nowhere near straight. Um, all the way up to this point here, we have got. I'm sorry, it's gone thick again a constant negative gradient and therefore a constant negative acceleration. Here we get a spike, right? It's extremely positive, it's almost infinitely positive as it jumps back to the light there. Again, slightly unrealistic situation. So you get a big spike like that, whoa, high up like that. And then it immediately falls to zero, the gradient falls to zero and therefore the acceleration is zero for a short amount of time. And then here we get a very large positive spike again. It's extremely positive. So we get a very large positive spike. And then again at the top here, it immediately drops to a constant negative gradient and therefore a constant negative acceleration. Okay, so this looks a bit weird, but that's because as I say, partly it's an unrealistic situation and partly because you've got massive accelerations when the thing is actually bouncing. You probably wouldn't actually get two spikes, you'd get more of a sort of uh, sort of a humpy curve as, as the thing bounces, but this is our this is our corners. Corners turn into spikes here. Okay? So all the time it's in the air, it's got a constant negative acceleration. And we can actually put a value on that negative acceleration. It's nine point eight one because actually this acceleration is due to gravity. So this value on the axis here would be 
minus 9.81 meters per second squared on the acceleration. Okay, so that's how you can um, change or translate from displacement graphs to velocity graphs and velocity graphs to acceleration graphs using gradients. Thanks for listening. <laughs>